So the small block Chevy engine is probably one of the most common engines to swap into anything, and it's basically simple to do. You only need a handful of wires to get that thing running. Beyond that, probably the second most popular engine to swap in, nowadays especially, are the LS engines. Now you guys can take your stock harnesses, you can cut them down, send your ECUs out and have them flashed, and then you guys can swap those in as well. Let's not overlook something that kind of sits right in the middle, and that's TBI, or better known as throttle body injection. Now this engine out of this Suburban will be going in or transplanting into my 91 crew cab one ton square body. And what I wanted to do is run through this system and make it standalone so I can just pluck it out of here and basically wire up a couple wires and get this thing running in my square body or for you guys you can put this in basically anything it's basically the same across all of the tbis the two eights the four threes the five liters the five sevens and then the seven fours now i've already taken care of all of that i'm going to show you guys exactly the wires that you need to find to make this standalone we'll get it all hooked up and i'll show you guys that it actually runs so first things first, you guys are going to have to locate the ECU, the PCM, the computer, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, in our OBS trucks, they are located up behind the glove box, and there's a couple connectors that we want to be worried about. First, we're going to have this big black connector. You're going to have a medium size black connector, and you're also going to have one small black connector. The only thing we're concerned about right now to get this thing running is this black connector and really only two wires. There's a pink wire right here, with a black trace, and a red wire. Now these may be different depending on your engine setup. This being a big block, um, they may have different colors. But we're only concerned with these two wires and where they go and what they do. So this is the other side of that connector. Again pink wire with black trace and a red wire. These two wires are going to be your key on hot wires. So you're going to want to run this to your ignition switch and make sure that these have current or power or battery voltage when you guys turn the key on and when you crank. It's very important to make sure that these two wires have power when you crank. Now as far as the computer goes or the ECU, you're going to have two connectors. You're gonna have a red and a blue. Um, you guys can also have a black and a black, but in our case, this being a newer, or it's a 94, so on the new end of the TBI, and that it's a big block, I do have red and blue. On my blue connector, what I'm looking for is this orange wire. This orange wire is going to be your constant, so there's power here all the time. What I've done is just basically taken that wire and followed it all the way through the big wire loom. And that runs up over here to this fusible link. And this fusible link comes over here to the bus bar, which has battery voltage to it all the time, so constant. That's what this big black wire is. So this fusible link, an orange wire, needs to run down here to your PCM, your ECU, your computer, and that's your constant. So you're going to have those three wires, two of them that go to key on hot and one that goes to constant. And then you're going to have two more wires that you got to worry about. And that's over on the other side of the truck. So over here on the driver's side of the truck, you're going to have this big black connector that runs down and connects into your firewall. This actually goes to the fuse box in your ignition switch. What we're worried about in that connector are two wires. You have a very large pink wire. This is my jumper wire going to the battery. This big pink wire runs through your harness, comes out right over here on your coil. It's gonna supply the power to our coil when we get ready to start this thing up. And then to make this all simple, we're using this big purple wire. This goes down to our starter solenoid, and I have my jumper lead on that that runs over to our push button so I can crank the engine over from outside. All right, so let's hook it all up. 
We've got our two wires. These are our key on hot wires. I just have the wires kind of stripped back, both of them together and a jumper wire that I'm just going to run up here and connect to my positive side of the battery. Um, yes, that is technically considered constant, but when I take it off, that is key on hot. So that will work on the other side of that. Make sure that we have our orange wire that goes through the loom and that's going to go up here to our bus bar. And I know I have constant power here and here. And then I've got my jumper wire that goes from our big pink wire to our coil. That's the yellow lead. I will also just hook this up to the battery to put a constant power to the coil so it fires up. Okay, so we have power where it needs to go and everything should power up. Got one last thing to worry about, that's fuel pressure. We gotta make sure that we have enough fuel pressure behind the injectors to fire those injectors. Now, this was going to be turned into a demo derby truck. I bought it this way, and the kid that I got it from did something pretty unique here. Um, just to get the truck running, he put a fuel tank with a pump inside the cab. And actually, once he got it all running, he um, actually used it just with the key. Had that all figured out. Um, it ran so good that he decided that he didn't want to put this in a demo derby. He'd rather sell it just because the big block ran so well. So all that being said, all I'm doing here is running two wires from the sending unit up underneath the hood. This big pink or purple wire is our power wire that goes to the pump. And then I do have this little black wire and that just goes down here to the battery. And it just turns the fuel pump on. So now that we know what wires we need, um, I've kind of gone over what each wire does. You know, the pink one on that side goes to your coil. The purple goes to our starter solenoid. On this side, the orange wire is our constant wire for constant voltage into our computer or ECU. And then on this black connector, the red wire actually goes to power up both of our injectors. And then this pink wire goes and powers up the ECU. Plus it also powers up a couple of random sensors underneath the hood of the truck here. Um, go out and get yourselves one of these. This is a Chilton's manual. Um, easiest way that I found to figure all this out was to find the one that fit the Suburban. And then they actually have the ECU or engine control module all laid out and you guys can just trace these wires on where they go and what they do and it'll tell you really what needs to have power like the red one is run in hot and start um, then you can just trace that down to the pin you need and um, go from there so let's hook everything up and uh, we'll get this thing fired up and i'll show you guys that it runs all right guys let's fire this thing up um, Got to make just a couple connections. This jumper is for our key on hot. This goes over to the coil. And then I need to supply the ground just to make our fuel pump run. And when that's in there, you just hit the button and it'll fire up. Just like that. Well, there you go. We know it runs and I, I did everything correctly. Um, all in all, all into this, it only took me a couple of hours to kind of find everything, walk through it and trace just a couple wires. Um, I did have a little bit of an issue. It wouldn't start the first time and that's because I wasn't supplying power to my injectors. And that's that red wire and that little black connector I was showing you. Um, so just make sure, A, that you guys have power where it needs to go. Also make sure that when you have this actually hooked up in a vehicle, that pink wire and that red wire are key on hot in run and in crank, otherwise it won't start. Um, hopefully this helps out. If you guys have any questions or if you need help kind of navigating your harness, drop it in the comments, let me know. I'll do my best to help out. Um, please like and subscribe, of course. I do these videos um, because I enjoy them, but I also like getting the information out to you guys. Next steps for me is uh, I got to pluck the engine out of here, 
and then I will end up going through the harness and I'm going to take out a bunch of the stuff that I don't need. And then one last thing I do need to do is supply 12 volts down to the connector for the transmission. This truck's got a 4L80 in it. Um, need that just to make sure the transmission shifts right. So again, thanks for watching. We will catch you guys next time.